welcome to my talk. I'll tell you a little bit what I did, how I spent my, my weekends and evenings in the last six months. Um, and quickly about me, I'm Jan Christopher Vogt. Uh, I work at Extra AI in New York City. We magically schedule meetings with artificial intelligence. And uh, yeah, you also know, may know me from co-authoring Slick and working in Martin's lab for a few years, uh, doing the Compos Composable Records presentation last year at Scala Days, uh, being involved in Scala Forklift, uh, Lift, the database migration uh, tool for Scala. And I work at Extra AI. We, are, uh, we have 25, more than 25 engineers now. We have lots of little Scala projects going on. Um, some large ones. I personally have Scala projects on the side because I do open source work. So I have a lot of builds. I care about builds um, and I want them to be easy. And if you do builds in Scala, one of the obvious choices is, is SPT, right? But, I mean, we've all seen that. And there are other people who can say it much better than than me, what they what they feel fuzzy about with SPT. It's this as well from a talk last year at Scala, no, two years ago at Scala Days. And then this one. So, I mean, kidding aside, SPT has done a lot for the Scala ecosystem. It's it's a big step forward from from Maven. It's uh, it makes builds really programmable. It's very very powerful. There's a big ecosystem of plugins that solve all the problems you have. Um, and yet, a lot of people feel that CBT, SPT can leave you frustrated. So I, I had some ideas for a while how to potentially do things in an easier way. And finally got around to, to playing around with that prototyping a little bit and actually ended up completing it into a, to a full tool. So there it is, CBT, Scala Builds Reimagined. Fun, fast, easy, and intuitive. And how do I achieve that? Well, there are very simple building blocks. Um, I'm reusing familiar concepts that that all of us doing Scala know, and I'm effect I'm caching very effectively to make it really fast. Why not use Gradle, Bazel, or Maven? Well, same reason for why we're using SPT. We want builds to be written in Scala, the language that we choose for other stuff as well, and builds can be considered coding too. So. Why not use the same language with the same powers and same abstraction capabilities and safety measures that, that we use for anything else? So, um, right, and basically CBT gives a second option in this space. So this is the agenda for today. I'm going to tell you what kind of problems CBT actually solves, then talk about uh, the overview of features and do a live demo of those. Talk about the background a little bit, so a little bit more detail, not too much, um, how these features actually are implemented. Um, and then tell you how to contribute, and because it's actually easy. And then what's next? So what's happening soon in, in the CBT landscape? And uh, why is CBT fast? Well, we know that SPT uses Ivy, and Ivy takes quite a while um, for resolving things sometimes. And in CBT, CBT has its own resolver. It's basically instant. We'll see that in a minute. Also works properly offline. I'm not sure. If, I think that's mostly fixed in SPT now, but I'm not sure um, that you can kind of work on a plane or something. Also, CBT has a very fast just command line interface. You don't have a custom shell that you need to start into, and you don't have multiple instances running. There's one instance permanently running, and you connect to it with a, the with a client and immediately terminate again the client. But the server basically keeps running. And also, it uses native uh, operating system events to uh, detect file changes rather than polling the file system. CBT tries to be simple and familiar by providing a very simple API that feels natural to a lot of people. It's, based on classes and, and methods and overrides, um, while <clears throat> SPT builds a dependency graph which is quite complex and has a lot of operations to modify this graph and, and then finally interpret it. Um, CBT gets away with fewer building blocks and build scripts in CBT are written in vanilla Scala code. SPT on the other hand uses a, like a Scala dialect where the rules are slightly different and per personally, I, despite having to type less characters sometimes, I still find it less helpful because I have to remember all the different rules. Um, and in CBT, it's just it's Scala. It works like it always does. Um, because, of, because it's just Scala code, things are type safe, where in SPT, still during build time, but during graph interpretation time, you can get errors like this task doesn't exist in this scope, which can be harder to debug than 
what you usually debug. And for to me, SPT can seem magical in a lot of cases with plugins and with other stuff, and uh, CBT tries to get away with almost no magic. So let's let's show you how it actually works. Do the live demo. <clears throat> and uh, so um, <clears throat> just for so we have some people have an empty project. That's just a text file in there and a git ignore file. And the simplest thing to to use CBT to build stuff is just write the Scala code you want to build. So there's a default build which kicks in if you didn't define a build yourself. Um, and uh, we can just use some TBT helper tooling to create a main file. Uh, because you do that so often. So this is just object main, hello world. Is that visible? Right. <clears throat> and now we can do CBT compile, and it will compile this file and just basically return where it put the class files, but if we do cpt run, it will run it, say hello world. Um, so there's a little bit of helper functionality in there to just be fast when you rapidly prototype. When you write your build scripts by hand, it's very explicit. Um, a very easy way to write tests for your code is just to put some assertions somewhere, right? And uh, cbt helps you with that, in that if you create a folder test, and you go into test and create a main file here. Then let's say in the real main file, we put some class case class foo. And in the test, we have the hello world thing again, and we say instead hello test. <clears throat> so when you do CBT test, well, in the main directory, when you do CV test in the main directory, it basically looks into the test folder as, as a convention, compiles the code in there, but providing the code of the main project as a, as a dependency. So the tests can see the foo class. So in this case, hello test and foo. Um, and within the test folder, it's just a build. The same rules hold like in the, in the main directory. And if you, so if you go in there, no, actually that's, let's do something else first. Let's um, now explicitly create a build file, which is probably what you want to do with everything more than just experimenting. So there's a helper to create this a template for you as well. <clears throat> this is what a build script looks like in CBT. So the, the CBT runner compiles and runs this obviously. Um, and so you have access to CBT's internals. You can import from CBT, and then it just generates these imports because that's what you frequently need in CBT build scripts, URLs, files, and immutable sequences from Scala. <clears throat> and then a build script looks like this. You have a class build in the top level package. That's what CBT looks for. And you extend one of CBT's, uh, well, base, base classes. In this case, the basic build. <clears throat> so let's, let's add some dependencies. That's, something where we need a build file that we write by hand. Let's say we need, we use Ammonite Ops. <clears throat> um, okay, so if we just try to run or compile this now, we'll obviously get a compile error because we don't have this dependency on the class path. But now we add it, and to add it, we just override the dependency uh, member on the, on the build. <clears throat> And generally, when you override it, you probably want to call the, the super, whatever, whatever the super is as well. And then the way you define dependencies in CBT is you create a resolver. This is just a Java net URL, so you can put your own URL there if you have your own repository, or you can use one of the built-in ones. This creates a resolver, and then you bind this resolver to one of your dependencies, which means this dependency will be re resolved using this resolver. Um, so CBT supports SPT's uh, DSL style for dependencies, just so it's easy to copy and paste from the documentation of projects. However, recommended is to use the, the constructor style, um, where just Scala dependency and this. Scala dependency means the minor version of the, the major version of the Scala uh, version you're using is automatically injected in the artifact ID. If you use Maven dependency down here, you have to provide it explicitly, or if you use Java dependencies, that's, that's what you need to use. So let's, let's use this instead. <clears throat> so if we do it now, This does work. 
And as we can see, it's cache dense basically instant when you try to do it the next time. Um, other stuff you can do, you can do CBT class path. This will really give you the class path of your code plus all the dependencies. So it's nicely interoperating on the command line with other tools. You can just state, for example, do scala-cp, using round parentheses here because it's fish shell, it's not bash and bash away backticks. And then I'm providing, I'm giving the class path to Scala. Now I can import Ammonite or I can, uh, or I can create the class foo. Um, right, so CPT generally tries to have return values from the commands which nicely interoperate with other tools. So you can just integrate on the shell like, like you do with general Unix tools. Um, Okay, and one more thing that's, uh, that you can do with uh, CPT is you can loop compile, uh, which is the same in SPT tilde. And basically this monitors obviously your main sources, so if we change something here and save, it will compile. If we put some garbage in here, it will give you a compile error. Um, it's very fast because it just uses the file system triggers to, to do this, to, to monitor the files. However, it will also monitor your build file. So if you do something here, like remove this dependency, um, Oh, it's only used by the tests, isn't it? No. Okay, I suppose that's one of the bugs. I'll get to that actually in a minute. <laughs> um, right, but if you if you change anything here, it will basically detect that and recompile as well. So it monitors your main code. It monitors the build files, the builds for the builds. It monitors CBT itself. So if you change CBT while you're using it, it will rebuild itself as well. So it makes it very easy to work on CBT. Um, Right, next, let's get to one more feature. So you can use git dependencies in, in CBT. So you can just depend on git repositories directly and on a, on a hash in there. So you can do this. This is a library that, I, uh, that has a CBT built in there. You can say, okay, use this hash and just use this as a dependency. And then we can go ahead and, okay, so it propagates to the tests. So I'm putting something in the tests now. Um, let's say print ln. Ai dot x dot diff dot diff show dot diff, and this tool I'm, I just imported is uh, just a case class com comparison tool. Um, so <coughs> the test should now print out uh, the comparison. Um, another thing you can do with CBT to have reproducible, reproducible builds is that you can bind your build file basically to one particular CBT version. And you do that by pasting a string into the, into the build file. So this means that this build file will always be built with the CBT version. In order to do that, CBT, the one you have installed, will download whatever version you refer to here and then basically call this other CBT version to do your build. That gives you reproducibility so your build file doesn't yeah, break if you update your CBT. Um, and we can see how that looks like. So, I mean, th this just works now because I have built this version of CBT before. But if we just remove the class files from CBT's installation folder and do the same thing, we'll see how CBT first rebuilds itself. <clears throat> and it does that in multiple stages. There's a Java stage, there's a, a simple stage with a resolver. And then CBT basically builds this other version of CBT which it cloned from the Git repository and uses that to build your build. And you can compose also builds with that use different CBT versions into each other. Right. Um, okay, so, um, so similar to, to SBT, CBT also support build, supports builds of builds. So now we created a file build, build, build .scala. Um, And within the build folder, the same rules are valid like in your main repository, like in your main project. The build folder itself is again a CVT build, which can have a build file of its own. So in here we can say, let's say we put a dependency in here for Ammonite. And then we can use Ammonite
in our build file. So that, that compiled. If we remove this, uh, yeah, there are some, some bugs, and I'll get to that. Wait a minute, where, where am I? Okay, seems to be a bug with the binding the CBT version with this. Okay, um, right, so if we enable this again, now it does work. And there is a, okay, um, plugins in CBT is, is pretty simple as well. Um, to create a plugin, you just have a source dependency in your build build. So let's let's just quickly write a plugin for, CB, for a CBT build. Um, so in there, so we have the plugin folder. In there, we create a a basic build. And in the basic build in the plugin folder, we'll just say that our build depends on. There is this way to refer to CBT itself, which is CDP de uh, dependency. Dependency. And now we can go ahead here and say, uh, foo task scala uh, import CBT dot underscore trade foo task extends basic build, which is the basic uh, build class in, in CBT. And let's say we define a task foo Okay, and now if we go ahead in our build build and depend on that, so there's a way to depend on different directories, similar how you can depend on Git repositories. In this case, I'll just do it by directory. You always start with the project directory, which is in this case, this build is responsible for this folder. So in this case, the build, the plugin is in here. CBT pen, there's an N missing here. So now the plugin depends on CBT, so we could compile the plugin and this the build build says that our build depends on the plugin. So in our pl in our build, we can say with foo task, and now this foo task could override stuff or could add more methods to it. And basically, methods are tasks. So now with this foo task added to the build, we can just call this task from the command line. So this is how you add additional. Um, oh, we need to go into the main folder here. So this is hello foo. So basically, plugins are just traits. It's, it's very simple to create them and to, to mix them into override things or customize things. Um, CBT has logging built in, so you can see some timing. Um, basically, this, this shows what part of the CBT took how long. And, and generally, CBT is very responsive from the command line. So just to see, it usually takes like between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 seconds to just come back, which makes it feel very interactive when you and you work with it. And there are some additional tools built in to just use the resolver and, and some other things there. These are additional commands. There's resolve, for example, um, referring to something, it will give you a class path for this. So you can uh, kind of use uh, CBT's resolver in isolation without actually having a build to just quickly test something. So now I um, imported a library and all its dependencies have a class path for it. <clears throat> so much about all oh, right, yeah, maybe one last thing. So within the test directory, I didn't create a build yet. It just uses the default build. But if I go into test, um, create a basic build. So, So within the test folder, if I try to CBT compile, 
by default, oh, um, by default, it will only see the code in the test project because this test folder is a build of its own, and it doesn't by by default look into parents to to find stuff. Um, but the code we want to actually test is in the parent folder in this case, right? So if we create a build file ourselves, we need to manually tell it where to find its own dependencies. Um, so in, in order to do that, we do the same we did before where we create a build dependency for project directory, just need this. So now, now it does compile. This, so, so CBT models tests as dependent builds where the test directory is a build that depends on the main build with the main sources. Okay, so, so far about the live demo. So features that are supported are compiling, running, testing, Scala doc, packaging jars, signing, publishing sonotype, type, downloading jars from different uh, repositories, triggering, uh, re -looping, looping, compiling or running or testing or something on, on file changes. Um, composing builds in, in various ways and uh, other things that are supported. Repro reproducible builds cross versioning for different Scala versions so you can um, compile it against 2.10 and 2.11. Mixing, like basically composing builds using different CBT versions into each other so you could use a library that is built with a different CBT version than uh, the main sources that you, that you want to use it with. Um, Git dependencies, plugins and traits and CBT itself has very few dependencies. It's Zinc, it's uh, a library to monitor file changes in OS X, um, GPG for the command line, JGit, I think that's it. And basically, CBT is feature complete for 1.0. There are some bugs left, some of which you have seen. They mostly, they mostly have to do with class loading um, and triggering changes between dependent builds, but it's actually very much, like it's not an unsurmountable uh, amount of bugs. It's, it's very much inside to kind of finish this up. And there, there doesn't seem to be like a rabbit hole that, that's big. It's actually very uh, approachable. And then some minor API changes are, are planned as well. But it's, it's basically ready to, to be tried out and to maybe start reporting the last few bugs so we can get them out. And generally, it has been very, very easy to fix any kind of bugs in, in CBT so far. Um, to get started to use it, there's a readme text and there is a developer's guide, which also can help a little bit when you, when you just want to use it as a user. Right, so let, let me tell a little bit of the back, about the background. There's, there's this sentence, uh, which I'm quoting from a different slide, uh, from a different talk, um, which I've heard from a lot of people. Everybody hates build tools. But I don't think that has to be true. That I think that's true because of the build tools we have. But in general, I mean, builds are just code. It's just yet another coding problem. Why, why though should that be any more annoying than any other coding problem we have? If you have a little library that, that provides the functionality that you need, then, then you should be good, right? So CBT is trying to achieve that, and it tries to achieve that with a few basic building blocks. So build composition is one very fundamental one, and you can model a lot of things just with build composition. And then all of CBT's functionality is actually in a library. You've seen that build scripts are written using classes, and tasks are basically methods, and you override or customize builds by overriding tasks or overriding methods. But in CBT, this whole class thing is just a shallow layer on top of this library, which is so a shallow configuration layer on top of the library. You can you can use the library separately. Um, you could use a different front, put, put a different front end on top of CBT easily, or you could um, use it in, in different yeah in different tools. Um, and also, com just command line interop is I think a very important building block to combine CBT with other things. Interestingly, the whole idea of having build files or build scripts being classes and tasks being method is something that also, I didn't, I didn't even realize that until Martin pointed it out. He was like, hey, if you look at SPT07, I was like, oh, right. Um, which has been explored there, but I think it's time to bring it back. And right, configuration by inheritance. And basically, because of this build composition thing, it's also very easy with, with CBT to break up larger Git repositories into smaller ones that depend on each other. And build composition basically makes it possible to have build depends on other builds, to basically use it to have multi-project builds, to, it, to support tests without having hard-coded support for configurations. Um, 
to have uh, builds for builds and basically do anything where you need something to be available before something else. In a way, this is even, even dependencies and builds in, in SPT and CBT are unified into one concept. It's the same thing. You need something before you can do something, right? Um, so the way CBT get, becomes fast is that it keeps a single JVM process running using this tool called Nailgun. So basically a single server that keeps running and the client, when you call CBT from the command line, connects to it and quickly returns. And resolving is fast by caching, obviously, artifacts, the jars on disk, the POM files on disk, and even the interpretation of these POM files, so basically computing what the real dependencies are, is cached separately in a file, which basically makes it instance. And for uh, the jars you, you're using, it caches them in memory. So it has a, it basically has a graph, a class loading graph, that mirrors the graph of your dependencies. So whenever any of the dependencies change, it can really validate only this sub part of the graph. It seems kind of natural that the class loaders should kind of mirror the way your dependencies are connect to each other, um, each class loader being responsible for one dependency. Um, CVT supports concurrency for projects as well as tasks, but it's opt-in, and it's, it's not very well tested right now, but it's, uh, it works, so we, uh, yeah, we should explore them more. Um, and native file triggers, it watches everything. Right, so um, CBT's resolver for, for Maven is a custom implementation. It's like 60 lines of code. It um, caches well. It does not support everything, so um, it should cover close to 99% of all Scala packages on Maven. However, the 1% falls out in everything that depends on the 1%. Um, but when I tried to, uh, when I migrated one of our builds at, at x.ai to CBT, um, I had one dependency that fell out, which we used for debugging that actually used Maven version ranges. Everything else just, just worked. Um, however, it's not my goal with CBT to build a, a new comprehensive Resolver. There's already another project going on called Corsair. Um, so basically the idea is to have CBT's resolver take all the low-hanging fruits, but not go beyond that, and then have support for dropping in Corsair to support anything more, more advanced. And actually Corsair is also available as an SPT plugin to replace Ivy as a resolver. And if you're using C SPT, you should totally check it out because it makes, uh, takes away the pain with resolving. How to contribute? First of all, CBT is, is very easy to understand. It's a very focused project. It's a small code base, about 3,000 lines of code. And it's very simple Scala code. It's code that beginners can actually understand. There are no monads. There are, it's, it's simple JDK dependencies with very simple stuff. Um, and it's a very clean implementation. There's been some craft accumulated recently with finishing up the last features for, for the conference, but I think that's easily cleaned out. And it's very loosely, it's a loosely coupled implementation. So most of the stuff is in a library, as I said, and then the, 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 the classes call into this library. And yeah. Um, to contribute, there's a developer's guide that explains what folder is what. Um, and what makes it very easy to, to develop CBT as well is that you install CBT by cloning the source code. You clone the Git repository, and then there's a bash script in the Git repository, which you can just Call. Um, it's called CBT. You can link it in your bin folder or something. And what this thing does is if CBT isn't compiled yet, it will first compile CBT itself in a few stages um, and then compile, uh, yeah, run your builds. Which means um, if you don't hard code your build against a particular version of CBT but just tell it to use the latest one, then you can just change CBT as you go and it's immediately reflected in what happens. So you have a very quick feedback cycle in changing the build tool and then that paired with the code being very simple hopefully leads to being easy to contribute to and, and people being able to, to f fix all the, the holes that, I mean, the, the missing features that maybe there. One, one, for example, is building fat jars is not supported right now, but should be relatively easy to just add, either as a plugin or, um, or to CBT itself. Right, plugins are just traits, can put them in Git repositories, depend on them as build dependencies or Git dependencies. So what's next? <clears throat> uh, near future work, get the, get the remaining bugs out, write more documentation, write more tests to test that these bugs actually stay out, um, clean up the API a little bit more. There are some, in many cases, I try to keep the names identical for tasks, identical to what SPT does, because, I mean, why reinvent, why not reuse knowledge? We know what the tasks are called in SPT. Um, in some cases, I may have overlooked this, so I, I want to get closer to 
what the names are. Um, actually, support course here um, support Git dependencies on builds and subdirectories, um, support ma Maven version ranges, snapshot reloading, which isn't supported right now. Right. So there are uh, they already formed a little community around CBT. I, I presented at any Scala and at Scala Penio, and people started contributing. So there's one uh, pull request opened by Rob Norris to add support for TUT, the documentation, the manual generator. And there's another pull request opened by Katrin Schechtmann to uh, add Scala.js support. And co conversation is going on there, like Sebastian, the Scala.js guy, is uh, commenting there as well. And another more pull request to add a cleans command and to add a Windows launcher by uh, by Michael Shavinda. And uh, also, he is work. He's, we will be working on CBT as a Google Summer of Code student, experimenting with two features. One is trying to run CBT completely in memory, basically syncing the files from disk into a virtual file system, and then running the Scala compiler on the virtual file system, compiling class files into a virtual file system as well, generating jars in the virtual file system, and uploading them straight to uh, to your yeah, Maven repositories from there. Um, the other thing is Git under, uh, CBT understands the dependency graph. So it understands which uh, of your builds are independent of each other. So it can parallelize them. It can also theoretically run them on a cluster. So M Michael will experiment how to uh, potentially run them on AWS Lambda or on, on Mesos. Um, also, something that would be great, I think, would be SBT interoperability. So um, yeah, people have an easier time picking up uh, CBT or integrating libraries that have a SBT build into a CBT build. Um, and, and something that, that I would like to see as well is uh, being able to write your build scripts in a different Scala version than CBT uses itself. Right now, CBT works the same way, like SBT in this way. I think SBT 0, 13, 11 uses Scala to 10.6. And then you have to write your build scripts in that Scala version as well. But it seems actually not too hard to achieve to detach that so you can pick your own Scala version um, for your builds, which sometimes may be useful if you want to use certain libraries as part of your build, which are only published for certain versions. Um, in the previous talks I gave, I promised a surprise feature for Scala Days 2016. And while I haven't fully integrated it with CBT yet, here it is though. So I wrote a parser for Scala error messages to basically make them look nicer and more readable. So here's, here's an example. That's a very simple error message. How about we just add some color? So that's maybe, maybe gives a little bit of faster time to pick up what's actually happening. Let's look at another example. Let's look at this one. This is actually not a very complicated error message. It's just a tuple and there's an either in there somewhere. Shapeless messages, error messages look way worse. But even this already, if we format that differently and pull out the fully qualified things into imports, basically show imports in the, in the type error, um, it could look more readable. I mean, here the imports are a bit verbose, it could be optimized more, but basically now this thing, the, the parser gives you a structured representation of the error message and a pretty printer to, to present it in a nicer way. And some other things I, <clears throat> I experimented with is highlighting whatever file um, you were working on, highlighting the error message better, highlighting the token that changed, and providing context in terms of lines of code. And the idea is to make it configurable so you can basically configure how verbose or how precise you want your error messages to be. And also now since we have a structured representation of the error messages, there are a lot of false positives in Scala error messages often. Something early goes wrong, then you get like a whole bunch of nothing, any error messages that, that just uh, convolute what the real errors were. And generally I think a good heuristic would be whenever you have an error that is about types that is not nothing or any, hide all the error messages after that that are about nothing or any, because then you see the ones that really matter. So that's, that's something that, that you can expect in CBT soon. So what does CBT actually stand for? And uh, I've been asked that a lot, and people generally take a guess. So I mean, I, I just thought it's compositional build tool, because the whole thing is composing builds was a thing that simplified a lot of things. Um, but people were like, hey, is it the complex build tool? Or is it the cool build tool? Or is it the CBT build tool? You see the recursion there? Or is it the composable build tool, which was my, my little pun in Scala days last year to compos for composition possible? But the thing that people uh, guessed the most, which I, even thought, which I even haven't thought of, was, hey, is it the Chris build tool? So now it's the Chris build tool. 
And uh, however, if we kind of establish a small community around it and and let people pick it up and have some people contribute, I'd, I'd love to rename it to the community build tool in a year. So that's that's it about CBT. We're uh, building really exciting stuff at X.AI. If you wanted Scala job with very smart people at uh, in New York City, join us at X.AI. And uh, that's it for me. Don't, remember to vote. The organizers wanted to highlight this here on the app. How you like the talk, and uh, that's it. Follow our uh, us on on the Gitter channel and GitHub. And check out X.AI. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes. Sorry? For file system? Yes. Actually, actually, uh, the JDK has an implementation for monitoring file changes. There's the, the watch service. And it uses the native operating system triggers on Windows and Linux. Only on OS X, for some reason, they haven't implemented the support for native file triggers, so they use polling by default every 10 seconds, which is kind of a bit slow. But there's a library which CBT uses called Barbary Watch Service, which is basically a API identical implementation of native file triggers on, on OS X. So now we have OS X, Windows, and, and Linux support. Yes. Um, yes, please. So I think you... Uh, so in SBT, if you have task B, which depends on task A, and then task A fails while running before your task B, you see a clear message that task A failed with this error. But in case of CBT, how does this work? Uh, you basically what, call what, different methods, and if it fails, then what? what? What do you mean by fail? If it throws an exception, you'll get a stack trace, and you'll see where it failed. Yeah, so but you will see it as a failure of a task B, not task A. Right? Um, let, let's, let's see that, actually. So um, let's say in here we have a task A, which depends on task B, and we have a task B, which uh, fails. And now if we do CBT A, uh, we're in the test, OK, you will get a stack trace. Um, that will show you where it failed, should at least. Uh, where are we? 20. Oh, right, right. Sure, it's at the bottom. So build a failed, uh, task a failed, which is in task. I mean, it's just Scala code, so all the tooling you usually have works. You can easily debug your build scripts using IntelliJ. I've done that. And then you actually see the stack, tra like the stack trace nicely and can step through your build. And um, that's the nice thing if you basically, instead of having a custom interpreter, use just Scala as the execution engine, then all the tooling around Scala just works. Right, are there other questions? Yes, please. I think he wants you to use the microphone. So it looked to me like um, your uh, plugin dependencies were available to the actual application logic. Is that correct? Or maybe I just missed miss no, something. No, and they're, they're not available to the application okay. logic. So here, Easy. the basically, CBT example is the main project. In there is a build folder, which is the build file. In there is another build folder, which is the build file for the build file, where we depended on the plugin. But then in the build file, we used the, the plugin. If you try to use it in the main project, you okay. wouldn't have access to it. That's fine. I just, I'm a, I miss off. Thank sure. you. Sure. Any more questions? Um, was there one over there? Yeah. All right. Then, uh, oh, there's one. <laughs> How does uh, the, for the Git integration, if it's a private Git repository, how does it handle credentials and authentication? Right now it doesn't, but that's, a, that's something that needs to be added. Um, this, yeah. Michael, I think, wanted to work on that as well. 
Uh, you mentioned uh, debugging your thing in um, IntelliJ. What is the IDE? What are the ramifications of this for IDEs and uh, also for like um, how hard would it be to make IntelliJ natively support this just like it does SPT? Yeah, I, I mean generally that I don't know in how IntelliJ is implemented, so I don't know what has to be done on their part. In general, it's it's CBT is quite simple internally, so it's simple to interface and and let CBT tell you what jars are are actually needed. So I I suppose IntelliJ could just call the CBT build and ask, hey, what what jars do you need? Um, all right. If there are no more questions, thank you very much. <laughs>